Call meeting to order. Uh, first item agenda approval minutes of August 30th. Fine. I think uh, Mary Ellen just sent them out today or yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Motion approved. Yep. yep. S second. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. Even yep. though I wasn't here, I get to vote. Huh? Yes. Ethics. Ethics. Comments from the public? Uh, Dan? Dr. Danger, is a quick question. Uh, um, now that we're kind of settled in, uh, I was wondering if the select board will consider authorizing FCAT to start filming the rest of our meetings. The CPC, the planning board, the ZBA, conservation. And we kind of, the town kind of misses out, I think. Yeah. I didn't know that, that, that they needed our approval. I just thought that they would <coughs> I think, cover um, whatever they thought. We can ask and look into it. Um, they're mostly uh, volunteer limited, uh, is my understanding. That was certainly the case when, uh, when I, uh, was on the board of when I, uh, at the time I left. And um, okay. it was a struggle to get um, enough people for select board and school committee and finance committee, because those ones, we just made those a priority. Um, uh, and there were a few planning commission meetings where I went and did it, which meant the quality was low, but at least it got recorded. Um, and although I don't think they were broadcast live. I can't remember, because yeah. it was a few years back. Um, we can certainly ask. There's no harm in asking. Deerfield seems to get covered pretty well. I don't know if they have their own person. I think, yeah, I think there may be some volunteers from within Deerfield's community who help out there uh, in addition to the FCAT folks. But uh, yeah, FCAT does run, uh, run that as well. So we can ask yeah. and see if we can start expanding uh, slowly into Waitley. I thought uh, it was more market demand in terms of FCAT decides what is must-see TV and what is mu not must-see TV. Oh, we often let the towns decide uh, that. And at the time we started, you know, the, you know, the people we asked said, oh, those three are the really important ones. Um, but it sounds like planning um, is, is a, another one people are more, are more and more interested in because things are happening planning here. Planning the most powerful board in this town. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, Especially yeah. Especially with the new marijuana regulations and stuff. They're yeah. But and then you mentioned, so if you had to say, um, uh, besides the, the school committee, the select board, and the finance committee, and you, you might not think we're the top three, but no, actually, if you could no, add, uh, if you could planning add, board and ZBA, yeah. I would think yeah, planning board and ZBA are the next two most important ones, uh, in my opinion, yeah, and they meet the once a month, if that, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. If, there's, yeah. if there's agenda items they meet, yeah, oh, okay. sometimes it's less than uh, ZBA, so okay, yeah. then, then, um. Maybe we should, is that something you could do, Brian, get a hold of Chris and ask um, if it wouldn't be stretching it to get yep. planning board and CPA um, kind of in the loop. And then let's see from there um, uh, if we're not stress, stretching their resources too, too much. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, the, the latest for the, well, the ZBA, they had the two meetings on the solar farms, both solar farms, and I don't, I don't think there was, FCAT was there no, recording. Yeah, Full yeah. House yeah. Of them. yeah. yeah. Right. they had quite a few there. But I asked when we scheduled our uh, information meeting in what, April, and even the one in November, it was FCAT was going to be there, because I know Deerfield had something else going on the same night as we did, and Sunderland did too, so I asked, are you going to have somebody there, even though you got already publicize three meetings that are mm -hmm. more critical, maybe important than ours, and they say, yes, we'll be there. So yeah. they were they were there. I think it wasn't the shortage of people running cameras. I don't think of the reporters were there at all the meetings, but yeah. it, was, it wasn't the shortage in the cameras. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, that, at some point the personnel is, there's a personnel budget, yeah. and the, that just kind of determines how many hours, but I'm not sure how close they are to the, uh, you know, to their limits. So that, because I haven't been in the loop for about a yeah. couple of years. And I know. think Brian asked for them, I think made an effort, right, to call FCAT to, to mm -hmm. video them, at least them two information meetings. Yeah, I think they seem to respond pretty well when we ask them to be someplace. Yeah. Connected to that, when are we going to go live? Good question, I need to follow up with that? Yeah. Need to follow Chris. The okay. drop is here, and he was going to be exploring systems, the way to connect from back there to here. He's going to explore some wireless system. <coughs> We should get that. We should make that yeah. right? I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're not live, you're it's old news. Yeah. Twenty four hour news cycle, man. Yeah. Right. Okay. Could Facebook live it? Anything else, Dan? No. Okay. 
uh, scheduled appointments, none. Old business, town hall project, review contractor bids, awards contract. Uh, let me say what, uh, bids were open this afternoon at two o'clock. We've got six general contractor bids you can see on the sheet here. Uh, uh, Brian, myself, and uh, George Dole from uh, Jones Whitsett Architects were there for the bid opening. Uh, these are the six bids we, we received. Uh, and then after that at four o'clock, building committee and historic commission met to review these and make a recommendation to, to this board on uh, what we, how we should proceed with these contracts. Uh, let me just say the other, the other thing is, two weeks ago we received bids from the subcontractors. And the process here in the state is the subcontractors for major items like painting, HVAC, plumbing, and electric mm -hmm. submitted bids. And we got at least two from each one of them. And these contractors had to pick the lowest of them bids. So all of these include the same sub bids. So the base bid includes the sub bids, the sub -bids. Okay. that we got two weeks ago. And the sub bids that we got two weeks ago were on the high side. Uh, mm -hmm. We're like 30, 40% higher. And that's reflected some in, in why these base bids are higher. The project was advertised for 1.1 million is uh, mm -hmm. what the engineer's estimate was without the two alternates, bid alternates. Uh, so if you take the 1.1 1 .1 and you add the 140, there was like 140,000 difference in the subcontractor bids between mm -hmm. the engineer's estimate and what the bids came in at. So you had 140 to the 1.1, 1 .1, so you get 1.25 roughly. So these are like 85,000 over. Mm -hmm. But you can see that the three lowest are, are within range. So uh, I guess the, the building committee felt comfortable with these, with these bids, what we, we received. Uh, and the, uh, the bid alternates, okay, alternate one was, was basically for the it says uh, site work, which is at the beginning, the front of the building, the west side parking lot, is to, to be put sidewalk and repaving the parking lot and including a handicap ramp to the building. That was site work alternate one. And you can see the estimates that came in, which were close to what the engineer's estimate was. Alternate site, so alternate bid two was for a new septic system, uh, new, t new tank outside the post, outside the town hall, connected with uh, piping and down to a new leach field, further down the hill behind the, beyond the library leach field. Uh, we weren't sure whether we needed that when we first decided the project, and these are the bids that came in for that. Uh, these are lower than what the engineer's estimate was. Mm. Too bad we don't need it. Right, as of today, we do not need it, but if something that happens or occurs in the next six months while it's under contract, that's an option, I guess, to go with that. Do we have to go with, when we pick a general contractor for the base bid, do we have to go with their bid for alternate site, the site one work, or can we pick somebody else, the low bidder for the additional work. No, no, it has to go with that. With it has the to go with the with a general contractor, and we yeah. have to pick. So we have to pick alternate one. For us, if we go with that, before we go to alternate bid two, Otherwise we can't do alternate bid two. We can't do a new septic. Whatever. Right, we don't need two, two anyway. Then, so no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. No, but no, you, you yeah. have to go with the. And even if you, if you add the two together, if you decide to go with alternate one and the base bid, you're still going to come out to the same, the same, to same, the same contract. Same contractor yeah. as a low bid. As a low bid. Have 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 these have all the contractors been adequately vetted? Do people think? Uh, yes. Well, uh, Jones Woodset uh, is familiar with all of these. 
and they, and they give their good housekeeping seal of approval for all of them. Each yes. of these contractors need to be DCAM certified. Yeah, right. Well, that doesn't mean they're necessarily competent. Well, as part of that process, so we'll have to do the same process. So once the project's completed, the, the project owner needs to submit a, a review form to DCAM. Mm -hmm. What is DCAM state standpoint? Uh, Division of Capital, capital Asset no, okay. Management. Yeah. Or something. Management. Yeah. And each, each contractor is given a score. Uh, based upon the reviews of the project owners. So they and all have a certain level of... of and, and if you're looking at, the, looking at the low bid here, yeah. where does their DCAM score fall against their competitors? Um, and we can see where the, where the bid falls. Yeah. yeah, they were 94. The other ones were, several others were around 92. I believe there's one that was 95. It's a score out of 100. Yeah. 100 okay. being perfect. Right. So not the being, so not the low score. Right. No. 60 okay. being. Okay. You probably don't want to. Yeah. So the low the low bidder was also one of the higher rank rated DCAM. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's good. Yes. And they were all approved for for this size of of base bid amounts. Uh, for DCAM certified, they they give you a, a level of individual project in total for the contractor, and all of these met that criteria as well, so. The pro George Stoll was the, the project manager for John Switzer. He was on the Municipal Building Committee for the Buckland Library. Mm -hmm. And Westfield, uh, Westfield Construction Company was the one who was the general contractor on that project. Uh -huh. They said it was a, it was fairly they, okay. For the library, not their town hall, but the library. For the Buckland yeah. Library, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm aware there's a. There's a difference between yes, libraries. A library. library. Oh my. It is, this is Westfield, out, they're, it's not Westfield, it's, they're out of New Hampshire. Wait, this is, this is not, right. Right. right, no, it's not a typo, it's, not a typo. it's their actual right. word. Right. Their right. they're out of New Hampshire. It's some of these others, uh, one out of Connecticut and Adams and mm -hmm. forget. And right, it's well, we know Wright Brothers or something. Right local. It's local. Yeah. But let me ask you this, the, my only concern about a non-local bidder is, how do I put this diplomatically? You'll find a way. General contractors sometimes are known to have more than one client at the same time. And I wonder if, because of distance, we're more apt to have production delays because of the multiple priorities that a general contractor sometimes, contract sometimes finds themselves in because of their overreach. Well, yeah, that... And delays obviously can cost money. Right, and there is provisions in the contract that they will sign for that. I think it calls for the project to be substantially complete by May 31st and all items done by June 31st or 30th, 30. and, and yeah. anything beyond that is $500 a day liquidated damages. And so, beyond June 30. Yeah, beyond June 30, yes. At, at a quality that we approved, not at a slap it up and get it done. Yeah, right, right, it'll be acceptable to. Not that I expect that, but we just have to be prepared for right. any contingency. Right, so it can't go on forever because they're dragging their feet and got other projects, right. And. Yeah, there, I think the, the DCAM thing was, I don't know offhand what for Westfield was, I don't know, 1.7 or 1.8 and they're up to, I don't know, seven, something like that, seven million mm -hmm. projects that they, they can have, but, uh, but that doesn't right. tell you how many specific projects they have. Yeah. yeah, you always run into that, I guess. And it's the same with the start date. We have, after we, they, and us signed the contract in so many days to start work. Right, we'll work out the details. So, um, you know, I, I, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, are, are we remiss in not, because the bids are within $30,000 of each other, where is Soulier and Zepka? One is, uh, could be Agawam and, and 
And the other one? Uh, no, Sully and Zepka, the, the one above Westfield. Adams, I think. They're in Adams. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, we all know the challenges of the regional economy. Yeah. For, for a relatively small amount of money, and I, and I get that, I, I see the numbers. Yeah. Nothing is anything mandating us? Yes. It is. Yeah. And, 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 and there's no contingency for supporting local economies. It's, it's the lowest responsible and eligible bidder. Right. So you have to so deem someone irresponsible. We would need to we would need to have a, a specific instance where right. they really did not perform on a public project that's documented for us to reject a little bit and move to the next one. I have many problems with 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 the public construction procurement process. Oh, you can only imagine. Um, that's one of them, and there's lots of other ones as to what happened with the sub bids too. So. You know, we all know that we don't have the strongest economy in the world. And, and to, to farm out work that can be done competently by local people. Yeah. Well, and, and, and again, it's not an outrageous difference. Right. Most of the sub-bits yeah. are, sub are the, Where are the sub-bits from? We're local, yeah. um, And the total for the sub-bits you were saying is about 85,000 of this came from sub-bits? No, I no, know? 500 something. Five hundred twenty thousand. So oh, okay. Yeah. So not quite half. Somewhere between right. thirty and forty percent is local. Do, um, do we know that they might employ people who are from around here? No, we don't know who the subs. The, the, the subs aren't local. Yeah. Whatever. We don't remember. know. Yeah. They, they were not yeah. in the, not in Franklin County. I could say. No, I don't know Hamden or Hampshire County. Yeah, but it's still a regional economy. Yeah. Right. It's not, let's not go county economies, it's regional yeah. economies. Right. right, but we we have no control over who they hire. Right. right. Oh, yeah, no, we don't have control, but uh, just saying they, they might not ship all their workers in from New Hampshire. Yeah, but there, there was two other local contractors that were interested in a project that went to the two or three information meetings we had at it the town bid. hall, but it didn't submit a bid. So there was interest, but for some reason they didn't submit a bid. Okay. We got the one, yeah, one did, one local one did. It would just be nice to breathe a little life into the economy on again. And this is not insignificant amounts of dollars. No, no it's one of our biggest projects we've ever had, I guess. Okay. Uh, the, other, the other thing, that comes into play is, do we have money for this project? Well, that's and, that's. And I'll let yeah. Brian Brian worked up the latest uh, cost sheet for that to show you how much we have and, and what we can approve and where do we go from here before we I guess concur in this. Yeah. So you have these? Yeah, they should. Yeah. So there's a two-page spreadsheet here. One, okay. town hall project funding. It says private projected, and the other one is private in hand. And there's various, and there's total funds secured. Um, and this, the $118,650,000 is what there is in hand in terms of the private fundraising effort. And then there's the projection of the $150,000. Um, that, the folks are pretty optimistic that they're gonna meet. I mean, if, the, if they get everything that's pledged, they're within uh, six thousand dollars of, right. of meeting it, and that seems like that's not just empty optimism. Right. They've, they've got a little, little bit of a track record here, so that's um, yeah. I I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. So the top the top chart here is total funds available, total project cost is a, is a chart below. Then down to the right is a difference between the available versus the project cost. So in the projected, there's around 55, we'll call it $56,000. And then if we were just looking at what's in hand, there would only be a difference of 24, of $24,500. On the second page? Yeah. On the second page. Okay. Typically, we like to see a bigger project contingency. Um, 
typically around, you know, closer to 10%. But we are where we are right now um, in terms of the amount of money we have. The recommendation of the Municipal Building Committee and the Historic Commission um, it would be to move forward with the project with Westfield Construction. We don't have enough money to do at alternate one currently for the front parking lot. Um, we simply don't have enough money to do that. So there's there's a couple different things or a couple different avenues we could explore to um, to seek more money for the project. One would be there's a um, American with Disabilities Act grant through the state that's due in the middle of November. So we could apply for that. And we probably should apply for that. Um, if we go forward anyways, mm -hmm. because it's it's up to $250,000. I'm not saying we're going to get that amount of money. I'm not saying we're going to get any money. Mm -hmm. But that would obviously help um, increase the contingency by a lot mm -hmm. if we award it close to the maximum amount. Um, but in, in terms of other than that, we'd have to look at, at appropriating additional funds. Um, yeah. Just so I know your reaction. If we threw these bids out and put it out again, yep. I know, other than delay, I get that. What do you think the likelihood of getting lower bids would be? Very little. Yeah. Even if people knew that there was th they were thrown out because yeah. we couldn't afford the current bids? I think so. That's what the architect yeah. is saying as well, yeah. And, and the other thing... Why is he saying that? In their experience is when you rebid, you don't usually get lower bids. And the time of year also is a factor. You're, I guess if you wait, maybe wait another year, but they're going to go up 3 to 5% every year. That's common knowledge because the prices go up. And the, the other thing that's going to hurt us is all the activity is going to be down south now because of major events. So you're you're going to pay more possibly for materials if you wait another year or getting materials maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what they're saying as well. You know, well, we were fortunate I think to to advertise now and get these bids in. Yeah, I thought we had a cushion with the CPC borrowing. That that's all inclusive. In well, that's including the four hundred thousand, and they also put in which I guess we didn't plan on. Uh, was money left over from the painting right. of the building? Some seventeen thousand was left over from painting, so they they threw that in here. So the higher bid costs ate up the CPC contingency. Yeah, gotcha. right. And there's there's also I guess possibility of more CPA money coming next next round, uh, either yeah. unallocated they, they or a lot there. Yeah, they've done, they, yeah, they've done they've, they've, they've really, done yeoman's work. Right, but yeah, I they, guess that that's still another source, either unallocated right. or the the historic uh, preservation pot right, for that. I, that's going to depend on what other applications come right, in. Right, what else right. comes and, in? Right, and there's yeah, right. and and I think they they really have put a lot of the seat yeah. percentage wise. Right. Yeah, they really. So I, I I don't think that would be the first place to go. But I guess there's, I have sort of two thoughts on this. One is I think this was passed and supported largely because uh, it was not going to take uh, like real estate taxpayer money. That was a strong thing. So um, I was trying to think about um, any monies that we receive that are uh, like one-time windfalls, like what's left in the cell tower account. Right, that's um, an option, right. That's, a, that's an option. It's a, uh, Brian says it's only about 15 or 16,000. Right. So that brings this contingency up to 5% from 4%, if right. we're looking at the first page. Yeah. Um, we, we get a few thousand dollars, like $1.8,000 a month in rent. Um, if that were sort of thought of, then that might be another 1% over the course of a nine-month period. Uh, so we don't have a lot of those kinds of sources. But we could, we have a little bit, so we, we can probably get this up in a manner of speaking without touching money that comes in from real estate taxes. But then you're starting to, it's starting to get a little bit of 
oh, where is the line between local property right. taxes right. and everything right. else? But, but, right. you know. but then the second, I, second thing was, um, I mean, the reason you have contingency is because probably things are going to happen that you don't expect. Oh, right. What is, and this is, I don't know the plans well enough, so this is really maybe a question for Fred and, and John, if you know some of the details of the plans better. If a contingency came up that couldn't be covered by our, uh, our, our meager 4 or 5% if, if we decide that cell tower money might be the thing to go there, what is it that's in those plans that could be put off if we needed another 50000 or $70,000 for a contingency item? Is there a place where there's something that's, that's at least put offable until more money could be raised, or uh, then uh, you know uh, grants could be applied for and stuff, which is obviously going to happen. But it's really we have enough to do this, yeah. but we just have such a slim margin yeah. that it's risky. Uh, the, uh, the, the the easy answer is no, because we've cut back as much as we could oh, okay. in 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 the project to get it down to the, the 1.1 million. Uh, yeah, there are some items that. Maybe we, we couldn't do like one thing we, we talked about was there, the floor is uneven on the first floor. If we don't take out all the humps, there's two or three humps going down the hallway. I mean, you could save $10,000 because you don't have to redo the structure to take the humps out. So, you know, if the it humps are the, character building. I know, but it's, it, it's affecting, if you take the yeah. carpet off and you look down the floor, you, you can see humps in there. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. you're talking about that's you would actually do something, something like structural that you to take care. But then you have to know about that at the beginning, wouldn't you? Or could is well, that yeah, something we know about that now. Other stuff we don't know. Some on a plan. No, but I mean, like as you go along, as the work progresses, you know, things are getting done, and then something comes up, right? And then you can't cut things that you've already done. You have to cut things that are happening at the end of the project. So. If right. push were to come to shove, what is it at the end of the project that wouldn't get done if we ran out of contingency money? We, we don't know that today because... Oh, we don't a, know the order of operations. No, an operation, and you don't know the line item. They didn't bid on a line item. It was a total project. So we don't know, say, the, the 35 doors they're going to they're gonna put in there, all of a sudden the, their price increased by $2,000 a door. We don't know that. That's something they're going to have to eat. Is that something you could do for a change order? They no, could, no. but it, but we didn't ask for specific line items for them kind of costs. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got two for, there is for a slate roof and for refinishing the floor, the amount of them could go could go up or down. And they gave us dollar figures for that. Yeah. But as far as the, the other items, uh, you know, you, you want to put two toilets in a bathroom instead of three. Well, I, I, I guess you could do that, but that's not meeting no. ADA code. No, 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 that's, I, I, that's I, not I, a yeah. plan. I, I, I want mean, you to understand the risk better is what I'm trying. I'm not, I'm not saying pick out something necessarily in advance, but, yeah. and, and it's an opinion question, clearly. Yeah. Like, if we get in trouble because 55,000 is not enough contingency, and I don't know, I hate to say the word asbestos, but you know, what if there was some uh, environmental hazard that came up that we have to remediate and it costs more than we have here? Good night, I environmental costs and good night, Irene. The, the, that, that balloons the cost. Yeah. Well, yeah. Beyond. But but just, just, but we, we if we had a ten percent contingency, we'd feel comfortable moving right. forward. Okay. So basically, the difference between the fifty-five we have and an actual ten percent would be about one hundred forty thousand is right. what okay. it's uh, it's shy of a hundred thousand dollars somewhere in the seventy eighty thousand right. dollar region so if you know if we're, if we're just for thinking purposes where would we come up with that much money or what would we not do at the end of the project <coughs> at the, you know on the timeline and we don't i guess we don't know the timeline well enough yeah. to be able to say well, I don't, but those I don't, are the two things that could happen right is either yeah, something we don't, don't do think or we're, you find more money somewhere. I don't think we're not going to do stuff because I'd say we're down to bare okay. bones as, as it is. And, and if we okay. not do or, or do something less expensive,
we're changing the quality, yeah. and we're not going to know that because right. we don't know what the what they bid on that item to begin with. Right. And I think Brian told you some some avenues or sources of funds we could use to add yeah. up, add to yeah. the contingency pot if we needed. Plus, there's there's also yeah. A free cash, a stabilization fund, or whatever else we How want to. How much is in capital stabilization? We want to put in there. Is it 60? It's, it's not like we One need level. to add to this today and yeah. commit. No, to no, I just, I mean, we just need to know where that money would come from and be willing to say, well, if the risk comes here, we've got to be able to push to uh, to vote uh, or what? I think things have to be appropriated at a town meeting yeah. of some sort. Um, what is it? 177,000. In capital, not in stabilization, but in capital stabilization. In capital stabilization. Regular stabilization is 218,000. Yeah, I don't, want to talk, I don't want to look at that, but the capital stabilization is, 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 is an option. Right. I, I, I got a question, but I also have a comment. I don't feel comfortable looking at things like, and I, Joyce, they're good ideas, but I don't feel comfortable looking at the cell, excess cell tower revenue or the rent we're getting from this space because we are facing a budget in the upcoming fiscal year that does not have Covestra income. And so we are up against it. So we're going to need that money to oh, just okay. cover our operating budget. So I, I don't want to think of those types of things as, as monopoly money that we could possibly put towards the project. Mm -hmm. um, the other, it's but, a, but stabilization, things that we've set aside for one-time expenses, you're saying... Usually emergency, be, but that could, we could look at, at that. Um, I, I, you know, I always hesitate to talk about what we have available because I'm a cynic. And I worry that if people see available money, they're going to say, it's, we need a contingency here. Yeah. Spend it on something, or or the contractors are going to say, "Oh, we got a problem here," yeah. you know. And, and I guess my my frustration is, I guess it's a question, but I know the answer to it. We talk about a contingency that because things come up that weren't anticipated. Yeah. yeah. But you never hear about. Turns out those doors were five hundred dollars per door less. Yeah. There's no contingency on the other side. No. They get their money. You're not going to go Regardless of whether their right. costs are lower than they anticipated or not. Right. Mm -hmm. So my question, and I know the answer, I think, is there's nothing we can do about that, is there? Because it's a scam. No. It's a scam. The only way, way to get away uh, around that is if you had light item bits for doors, concrete, flooring, yeah. toilets, and plumbing. I, I mean, lighting, light fixtures, all of that. Then you could see. Or, or, or the bid is hourly instead of by the project. How long, how much time is it going to take you? Sometimes a project cost takes a lot less time than was originally anticipated. Again, we don't get the money back. And it's our fiduciary responsibility on the, on the we have the backs of, of the taxpayers. And this system isn't a good system for the taxpayers because they need a contingency for, pop, for, for, for problems, but there's no reverse. Right. Oh, and, and we have complete freedom on the local level to decide all this? Well, of course not, not but I'm just saying, no, no, just, okay. there, there, there should, there should, we should have the capacity to have a conversation with the winning bidder about if your costs come in lower, you're not going to charge us, and you're not, it's not going to just go into your profit margin, because that's what's happening. Right. And it's very frustrating. Unless someone can say you don't know what you're talking about. And I think I do. We could think about expediting the DeMeo property that seems to be on hold now for several years. That's another source of funds. Yeah. Possibly, it's turning it asset to asset. But if it goes to the Housing Authority, it's not a possible source of funds. No, I'm saying. Right. It's sat the Housing Authority now for about three years. Time to. Well, the, uh, get off we, the pot, as they say. I don't know if that's really a good... You know, you've got the school, you got this two schools that you're going to have also as another source of funds if you want to yeah. look those at other are, options. But they're very, those are very longer-term options. Those are not things that are going to go fast. Not necessarily. So, yeah. Not necessarily. They could go soon. So do we, so do we as a board feel like the risk of having to come up with another 
uh, uh, call it $80,000 if there were a contingency. That's something that we don't have to appropriate now, but we might have to on a, on a short notice uh, over the part of the construction. Are we, as a board, okay with having that kind of a risk there, given the couple of different stabilization buckets of money that we would have to go through the process to actually dip into? Because to me, that's, that's really the issue. Our, it would, it's going to cost up so much to try and start it over and get lower bids right. with a very low chance of success. I think the right. risk there is that nothing ever happens. Right. Um, the risk here, I think, is a lot easier to quantify. It, call it around number $80,000 that we might have to come back to the town and ask for something of order, $80,000 or less, perhaps, because it's a contingency, to come from some stabilization account. Is that something that we as a board are willing to think, yeah, our town can take that risk? Well, it's... You, I mean, you and given, given even all the other things that are in this. You mentioned kind of, you know, alluded to, we kind of don't have a choice. It, yeah, like it's, it's, either, kind of, it's either go the project or not. And mm -hmm. if you're, the only reason you're not going is, is contingency funds, well, that may never happen either. You're yep. taking a guess exactly. that you need contingency exactly. money. Exactly, it's a it, it's a risk, which and, means it might right. happen or not. We and, it sounds like we have a contingency plan for a contingency, right. and that, that and that it's that it's not like it's not. <clears throat> I mean, it's a it's a lot of money, but it's not an unbearably no, I, unreasonably I, large I, amount of money. I, I, have a, that's, I think that's I know something we can't control, yeah. and it may never happen. I but, think it's a smaller risk than to decide not to go forward. Right. I guess. Let me just say that if whatever contingencies come about that are significant, and they, even if they're over the fifty-five thousand, first we'll be we'll go through the municipal building committee to see if that's something that we want to do and is necessary, yeah. and we'll provide a recommendation to this board. So it's not like this board is deciding all contingencies yeah. or, or all major contingencies or contingencies over the fifty-five thousand, however you want to look at it. So there, there is, there is that, that check on contingencies okay. in there. Yeah, it's uh, not a blank check, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, we, we kind of have no, no control and just wish we don't, hope we don't go over that. Fred, what's the housing committee's position on the domain of property at the moment? To advertise and see what kind of bids we get for private Prior development. Plan. Yeah, that was. There. And if they and if they stink, they would take the option. Perhaps if they were good, right. they'd say better. So, for the town. I mean, is this something that's in the works? No. So no. What's town, what's the more? The town's going to ask. What is the other contingency? What about this town property we have sitting out? Here? The other contingency that that probably will happen before that one is is the blue school selling the blue school because we're dealing with with the frontier uh, what building committee on issuing uh, RFPs for both lots that involve the blue school soon. And that may come to voters uh, accepting what we do at the next annual town meeting or maybe a special town meeting if it comes to that. Frontier is pur pursuing that. They want something done with the building soon. So. Aren't we gonna do a similar RFP with the, with the demand lot? That's my recollection. Well, yes, that would uh, be. A, a, a use, a, use a, a purpose. RFP. Right. Here are, the, here are the possible scenarios. Right, but I don't think Brian has gotten into that yet. He's focusing on his other, <laughs> his other is, ones first. This is take out a lot of my time. This and Frontier is pushing, so we need to be involved. Well, in Frontier. I mean, no, we need to be concerned about what's in the best interest of this town, and not be pushed by any one organization over another organization. Okay, but for, keep in mind, for Frontier, it's they have one lot and one building. I get that. And we have one lot as well, so. We're looking at it jointly or separately. I, Fred, I understand all those things. Right, yeah. So it's not like Frontier is doing the whole thing. We're, we're a major part of that as I well. I understand that. But we need to prioritize what's in the best interest of the town and not worry about different interests of the town, one right. prioritizing one over the other. If we, think, if we thought, and I'm not saying we would, but if yeah. we thought that the DeMeo property was something that we could have a quicker turnaround on, 
perhaps that should take priority over the blue school because we can get a quicker turnaround. I, I don't know. I guess I'd ask Brian. What his thoughts on We that shouldn't that be impacted. I'm not sure which one would get the quicker turnaround. I don't, yeah. well, I, again, we all know that the Blue School faces challenges in terms of either <clears throat> demolition, um, mm -hmm. it, it, there's going to be some, some costs there. Sorry. We know that there's nothing on the demand property. We know that it's perked. We, know, we, have, we have some knowns. We don't know that there's a demand for that property that's right on 510 and there are some other issues. But again, we need to determine what we think might go first so that we have the cash on hand to then make decisions about what we need to purchase. We can't decide our priorities based upon which wheel is squeakier necessarily. And again, it may be the blue school that we do, and that's fine. But there, there is going to be costs for whoever buys the Mayo property. Of course there will be. I mean, not, not uh, well, the, the septic system probably is going to have to be removed. Probably, I, I don't know. Well, uh, the septic system. I know, but people are saying that it's in the floodplain. So it was in the floodplain before it was put in. Too. Well, maybe they weren't worried about it then, so there's a cost to remove that. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're getting a little bit off yeah. topic. Yeah. We're talking right. about these other sources that mo would, pro I, I don't know, I'm skeptical about real estate things happening on any sort of a short timeline, right. but things that could potentially replenish, uh, uh, um, I'm blank on the word, the, um, the, the uh, rainy day money that we put away. Contingency. I mean, we, we, do, we do have, um, Money set aside for capital projects, kind of, you know, just in case we've got the backup. Uh, so, so if we had a contingency, we we do have a place. Are we uh, are we willing to stand up and say, look, it's worth taking this risk. The risk is pretty well defined. You know, it's in it's in a range of, of cash that we have. Many different ways to try and decide from getting it, and we have many different ways to say, oh, we could use that to replenish those reserves. I'm thinking of the capital reserve and the and, uh, other reserves we have. So it seems to me like we, we I just would, would want to acknowledge, yeah, we're taking a risk, but we think it's a risk we can manage, right? And however that comes about, if, if we've got some longer term things and we've got grants to apply for, we just can't count on the grants. So we can't count that chicken because we certainly don't know how big it is and if we'll get any of that chicken right so it, to me I, I guess i'm making the argument that yeah it's a risk but i think given the choices it's better to take that risk which i think we can manage um than to uh, put this whole process on its head set it back i don't know months or years yeah. for, uh, given all of the the hard work and it's to get this close and to and to not go forward just seems like the wrong decision for I, our town. I, I, that's, I agree that's with what you. I make, that's, the, that's the, I guess the proposal I'm making is that we look at this as a manageable risk. Keep in mind that the capital stabilization would be a two-thirds vote. So we don't control it. That's it's, true, we don't. It's a two-thirds sure. vote. Yep. But, but it's kind of, you know, we took a risk when we bought this building. Yep. We risked that, that scams would be here. Well, they're not here. We, we worked around that. And, Right. Doing something otherwise, That's, yeah. you know, uh, I I think that we can manage the the, the risk here the, the, with additional yeah. funds. I I guess and, I don't yeah. see I that as a that. major stumbling block today. Yeah. Okay. Now, if we don't get additional funds, well, I, I guess we need to consider yeah. that in the future when you talk about it. It's not a one-time deal. This is it, and we're closing our eyes to it. No, it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll get status updates every month and how much money is, is remaining and what extras we have and how close we're coming to the contingencies that we need. So we will know that before the end of the project or even before the contingencies need to be approved. Okay. Let's take a vote. Let's move on to okay. vote. Okay, I make a move that we accept the, the low bid uh, Westfield construction here from the town hall project. Can I, can I suggest two items? One is um, because we're using Mass Historic Commission money, they ask uh, that they are allowed to concur with our contractor selection so that the approval 
the award of the bid would be contingent on Massachusetts Store Commission concurrence. Their general. Do you see there, that being a risk? Um, and how much delay is that? I, I don't see it being that much of a risk. Um, and then if they don't concur, we come back and we, we say, okay, we say go, go forward. Well, they've yeah. been involved lately anyway, so it's not like we're giving them something new. Okay. It's just one of the requirements. It's a format. It sounds like a format. Like All right. Um, and what's the second one? In that I, I still want to um, call some, despite their, or even with their DCAM mm -hmm. score, I'd still like to call some of the, the, Public projects. Oh, they have that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I still like that. to. 100%. No, for lack of a better to George, term, but others reference. Yeah, I like to call some of the other. Um, have they done local work other than Buckland? Done work on the Northampton Courthouse. They listed four or five projects. Um, they did. And okay. Also, yeah, local. Yeah, there's been some. There's been some in Berkshire. I I I would vote. I I would amend. Joyce is it was it knows no, your to to contingent on uh, both uh, affirmation from mass historical and also uh, positive responses from at least two of the the references references okay I'll, I'll accept that as an amendment okay so we need to vote. Yeah, we're good. Um, yeah. Aye. 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 Okay. And would you, would you authorize the select board chairman to sign the agreement, sign the contract with uh, post haste as, uh, as yeah, quickly I as? Say, yeah. Yes, yeah. I would. I would certainly. Uh, I I would not mind delegating that to the chair yeah. okay. if that's uh, required for us to delegate. Egypt Road, I'm sorry. Okay, moving on to Egypt Road to sign the easement deed. That's just the chair? I guess that No, was. everybody. The whole family. That was approved at our last meeting? That was approved that the, the selector was authorized to um, donate the easement to FERCOG for the layout of Egypt Road at the last special town meeting. Okay. So now you're authorized to sign that. Okay, moving on to business. Residents concerned truck traffic on Chestnut Plain Road. Yes, that was uh, actually a call that I got. Have you talked to anybody else about it as well too, Brian? Or you know, I got a call from some residents who right, living right in the center of town. And it being summer, people have their windows open. Um, and it being summer, the sun gets up early. Um, and the truck traffic on Haydenville Road is waking, was waking people up at... Wait, Haydenville or Chestnut Lane? Haydenville or Chestnut Lane? Haydenville Road, where it meets Chestnut oh. Lane, they're coming across Haydenville okay. Road. They've got to come to a stop at the stop sign, and uh, I don't think anybody thinks they shouldn't. But when the trucks come to a stop at the stop sign, they make a lot of racket. Well, and also that braking system that they have, I know. Yeah, and then they make the turn, and then they've got to accelerate. And when they accelerate, they also make a lot of noise. So it's the brakes breaking. And then, so the, the person who uh, called was um, mostly uh, perturbed by the noise uh, because it's waking people up. And, that, and it starts at 4 in the morning. That's the thing um, that I think was. And then you want your, in the summer, naturally, you want your windows open at night so that you can cool off your house, um, but uh, uh, they're you know, just getting woken up by that. And it goes into the early evening at least. I, I wrote it down at home, but I don't remember how late um, uh, they were having um, things. Per I, I, don't, I don't remember it being super, super late, but certainly into the early evening. What, what kind of and trucks do they know, or what company was doing this? Do they know? I think they're, you know, they're the Tossing same. and turning in bed, so they're not out there taking pictures of the trucks. They're the same trucks that go past my house, I'm sure, because it's, it's on the route. It's on the route, and, and they're so... They're logging trucks there. Yeah, well, so I didn't trucks. know what we could do about it, but it seemed like it might as well be something we could discuss. And if we had any ideas about 
ways to um, take care of the, the noise problem was more the problem. Okay. Um, let, me, let me just say this, I, I get some information on that. Uh, well, for one, there is a trucking company that, that's on uh, Haydenville Road at the bottom of uh, Dickerson Hill, Dickinson Hill. They have trucks here coming and going all the time, so you're, it's not like mm. you're going to eliminate them. Uh, and the other, th the other thing that I've heard is the reason for more trucks lately was there was a paving project on Route 9 in uh, mm. Williamsburg or Goshen, somewhere out that way, and the route for the asphalt haulers or pavers was to go through the uh. center of town up Haydenville Road. Uh, I understand that project has ended and the trucks are not doing that anymore. So, I was not aware of that project. So I don't know if this, the concern this person has is no longer a valid one because they're not there anymore, the kind mm -hmm. of trucks. Yeah, you do get logging trucks come through. I go by my house too all the time, by a dance house all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're, well, I, I don't know how you're going to control that. Yeah, uh, but I don't know that they have to go by, much. like, we have a noise ordinance, but I don't know that that applies to trucks going down the road. Um, no, that I, applies to things like, you know, mowing your lawn and, yeah. and kind of noise that's made on a premises. Um, so I don't, I don't even know if, if, we, if we wanted to, if we could actually do anything about it. But well, I, I, if, I if wanted if to bring it up because somebody had yeah, brought it to me as well, a concern. Yeah. If it's, if it's a local contractor, I guess maybe, but if it's somebody going through, through, they have a right to do that as, yeah, as well that's... as anybody. And I guess if this continues, maybe uh, ask the person that gave you the complaint. If it continues, uh, let, let you know. But I was aware there, there was a similar incident of local local people doing that on River Road years ago, and then maybe before Mary Ellen's time, certainly before Brian's time, Lynn may know, but there was something done about local truck noise early in the morning, mm -hmm. where trucks were leaving early in the morning making a lot of noise, and there was a complaint, and something happened, but it's mm -hmm. no longer a problem on River Road, so, you know. Yeah. There, so there we have more con more um, influence, I'll say, not control. We have more influence if it's a local right. source of the trucks, but we may not have that much we can do. So it might right. need uh, more information, and it may be that because of this uh, project ending, right. it may be that the problem is going to be less intense right. from this point forward. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, Whaley Snowmobile Club, meeting space and parking on town property. This is the annual request for the Whaley Snowmobile Club to park at the DeMille property, so long as the town owns it, for the winter. Yeah, I move we let them we'll I'm, I'm shocked that they need our permission, but okay. I think we typically get a certificate of insurance as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, there's a no, liability or something. Okay. Yeah. And then they usually get into town hall. And then with the caveat that they may be going to the market, they could right. And they could buy it if they want. Yeah. Yeah. Then maybe. Um, and then they typically the in past years they've been at the town hall. We're going to afford that meeting space here. Um, Seems reasonable. That's all right with you guys. Assume it is. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're at the elementary school sprinkler system repairs. Probably comes as no surprise to you guys seeing I've heard the story about the sprinkler system at the school. Um, there's going to need to be some significant repairs to the sprinkler system at the elementary school. Um, the building inspector requested the school district test um, the sprinkler heads in the school district in the school because they're more than 10 years old, and apparently the the four that were pulled off and tested, didn't trip at the minimum pressure mm. um, needed. Uh, likely they would trip at a higher pressure, but at mm. the minimum pressure that's um, required or is part of the standards, underwriter, underwriter laboratory standards. Um, so 
we'll be having, I'll be having a meeting with um, the building inspector, Hampshire Fire Protection, their consultant there who did the tests, um, superintendent, um, I don't remember who I said, fire chief, and superintendent, principal, Hampshire Fire inspector. Protection, Bob Lasko, the building inspector, um, and we'll try to figure out what really needs to happen. Is that timing, is there, was timing discussed? Um, I'll meet with them tomorrow morning. No, in and terms of getting the sprinkler system repaired. Um, in terms of how long they have to do it? Yes. Um, John Hanneman mentioned to me 30 days. Um, from? 30 days from the date of the order. Which was more than 30 days if, ago? <laughs> if I want to be technical about it, I don't think we have an order. Oh. Okay. Quote unquote order. The order might not have been made. Um, okay. So was it four heads that failed or just the four tested? The four, the four tested. They tested four and four of them failed. Okay, so they assumed so 100% failed. Yes. 100% um, of the sample, so yeah. it's safe to assume at least some of the remainder are. There, there's currently $25,000 in a sprinkler repair count that the town had appropriated in the past, and that had, um, they've made repairs and, and paid for out of that account. I think it was somewhere in the order of 50, 50 to $55,000 when it was originally appropriated, now it's down to 25,000. The preliminary estimate of the repairs to do everything was $36,000. There may be a way that it could be phased in over Mm -hmm. uh, a period of time, and that's something we'll discuss uh, tomorrow Doesn't morning. the school run these tests on their own on a relatively regular basis, though? My understanding is they, they have not been recently tested. And sprinklers that are, according to the, according to the fire code, sprinkler heads that are not, uh, that are more than 10 years old need to be tested. I don't right. know if it's on the I guess my point, I guess my point would be it because it's nice to fix these during the regular budget cycle yeah. to test these as you're approaching your budget creation so that you know what your capital expenses are going to be coming up as opposed to waiting for the regulatory authority mm -hmm. to tell you for you that's that's my only I mean as you know it's 10 or 10 years old, let's get a system in place so that we're not caught with our pants down right. and we can have a, 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 a plan. I mean, it doesn't... Yeah, that falls under the plot. Let's go ahead. I'm not pointing fingers. No, no, Dan. I am. Well, okay, but yeah. I'm just saying that, that let's not only fix the sprinkler system, but fix the system. No, I mean, fix the... Process. 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 Yeah. yeah. So that we don't run yeah. into this, or a future select board doesn't right. run into this down the road. Proactive instead of reactive. Right. Just a matter of interest, they, I think they, when they just finished, they closed their books on the school. They became positive $41,000 in that neighborhood that they didn't expect because they had already asked the town and we appropriated 30000 for the phone and uh, clock system. So there's 70 something thousand dollars. Now I don't know how much of that's been spent on that, but just something to be aware of. They miraculously showed up with an additional 41,000 after we appropriated 30. So just be aware. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'll have more about that. Okay. okay. Moved on Mass Historical Commission signed grant agreement. Uh, we're not ready for that yet. I was hoping we would have all of our ducks in a row okay. in a grant agreement for you to sign, but okay. or I should say for them to have their ducks in a row. Um, but that didn't happen. So okay. Okay. to be continued. Town administrator updates. I guess we don't care any, right? Yeah, that's not. No. Yeah. You missed his chance. You missed his chance. We'll give you two, three quick updates. Oh, okay. One is if you've been down Egypt Road lately, you know that that work has started. Yeah, I saw yeah. that on my way here. Yeah. 
um, for the manganese filtration system, the pilot study and the technology that, that the water department had chosen um, has been approved by MassDEP. Right. They approved their pilot study, okay. so that's good news. Now we're waiting for um, MassDEP approval to actually make the modifications. Why it takes so long, I don't know. Um, and simultaneously we're waiting for a um, notice to advertise from MassDEP and the Clean Water Trust so that we can advertise the project. And we're also waiting for the loan agreement documents from the trust. So good news is the technology has been improved and the system works and will work and will be accepted by MassDEP. And, and finally, finally, and finally, Joyce knows about this, um, in terms of the next and pilot agreements for the two solar facilities, um, we've been working with uh, uh, Beth Greenblatt from Beacon Integrated Solutions mm -hmm. Strategies, and she's done the modeling in terms of um, what she thinks the, the, uh, the solar facilities should be valued at and what the corresponding tax payment should be. And um, she's going to start negotiating with Nexamp. I will just say that the values that she came up with are significantly higher than what Nexamp offered. Okay. So, uh, do we have a response date to get back to Nexamp? No. So it's open. And they yeah, want, they, they want, want it to happen sooner. They want right. it to happen yeah. sooner. So the next step would be negotiation. Right. And finding a number probably somewhere between the next half number and the yeah, we're, and we're thinking number. of not discussing the negotiation tactic and uh, recorded. That's probably a good idea. Okay, but we will say that that, that it was significantly higher than. Yeah. Okay, so they won't start any construction until that's agreed to. But they need to figure out if the, they need to finalize their, their financing model. But I also think that they mentioned they didn't want to. They weren't planning on starting till at least the spring, right? Next, next spring. Next oh, spring. it's always a moving target, so. <laughs> they need to finalize yeah. I heard it was going to be September. I thought yeah. they'd do something then, this year. Yeah. No, they need to finalize a smart program. That was for one of them, not yeah. for both of them. There's a, yeah, there's a, uh, the, they don't understand yet for sure because the smart program is not nailed down um, as to what percentage they're going to be able to, or what, uh, what rate they're going to be able to sell at and depending on how they, it's just a really complicated uh, thing and so they're, everybody's guessing about what that smart program is going to give them and the closer you get to when you actually the information is going to be available um, you know if they, so if they so if they decide in September it might be months before they know what they're actually going to get so there's a there's a lot of that going on I think too so. does the does the the rate hike request by uh, Eversource impact that at all in terms of its impact on solar in terms I, of next amps thought, thought process, and then running their I don't numbers. know if Beth would be a good person to ask. Uh, my guess is it is. Yeah. It's got to be. I mean, it, it can't be unrelated. It, it has to be related. So, and I and I get why they would need to know that before they. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I promise three. That's all. It's all. Okay. Good. Motion adjourned. Second. All. All two eight.